In this example of a simple cloud-based integration demo using the T24 integration framework, I'll show you both the design time aspects of defining the business event and the integration flow, and then we'll see the runtime in action. The process will start by entering a foreign exchange spot deal in the T24 core banking system. This will trigger an event leaving T24 and being delivered into the enterprise service bus, the ESB. In this example, I've elected to transform that message from the format that left T24 into an email and deliver that to Google's Gmail service. In my Gmail account, I've set a filter so that emails with a particular, particular subject line are flagged with a label of Forex and I'll make reference to that label when I use a second cloud-based service known as IFT which is an acronym for if this then that. I'll set a couple of triggers in that second service and that will cause firstly a message to go back to Google but in this case to my Google Drive account where I will append some data to a cloud-based spreadsheet and it will also send a message to my Wi-Fi based hardware device, the Belkin Wemo. So our start point is Temenos Design Studio and specifically the Integration Studio perspective. And it's here that I specify what the T24 business event is to which I wish to attach an integration message and also where I define the format of that message. So I've created one project here in my Project Explorer and that contains a single event and a single flow. So let's understand what an event and a flow are. The event is simply what is the business event that's going to trigger the message. I've got a number of exit point types and here I've selected application and the corresponding application I've selected is Forex. So what I'm saying here is regardless of the version or the screen that's used, any Forex trade that's executed, I want a message to leave T24 and I can choose different stages of the contract lifecycle for emitting that message. And in this case, I've selected the input stage. So any Forex that goes to INAU, unauthorized status, I will consequently get a message. That's all I have to do for the event. And then I have to associate with that a flow. So by clicking on this edit button, we'll launch the flow editor and we can see the message format. So we can see that the underlying application for this message is Forex and we've got a whole selection of fields here retrieved from T24 and these are all the fields that we can attach on the runtime message. And they're not restricted to fields that are actually on the Forex table itself. Um, we can also build joins. So if we look down here at the message that I've actually constructed, we can see I'm sending out the primary key of the Forex and the deal type but here I've also built a join out to the department account officer table because I want to retrieve their actual name and include that on the message at runtime. So I built an event, I have built a flow and then all I needed to do was right click on the name of the project, come down to this option integration studio and publish and that published all the events and all the flows in the project into my T24 area. So now we move away from the Temnos tooling to the tooling provided by the ESB vendor. So here we are in the integration flow that I've designed for the demonstration. And the first thing I did was to drag a T24 inbound adapter onto my workspace here. And I double clicked to configure that adapter, provided some connection details to my T24 environment, and that enabled me to browse into T24 and obtain a list of all the different message types, all the different schemas that had been published from Integration Studio, as we saw in the previous step. And amongst those, you'll see there is the Forex message. So I selected that as the message I'm interested in subscribing in. And then I provided some runtime connection details so that the adapter, once it's deployed, knows where to look to collect messages that T24 is generating. And the only final step I had to complete there was to say how often I wanted the adapter to check for those messages. And I've got my adapter polling every 10 seconds. So the next step was to go to the bridge section of the palette and to select the SMTP component, because in my example, I wish to send a mail. So I dragged that onto my canvas and double clicked to configure that. 
and all I had to provide here was the connection details which in my case were to Gmail's SMTP server which has a particular port number and some additional properties that I need to supply so it was a matter of a couple of minutes to add those and having set the configuration to the mail server I then in between those put an XSLT component which I took from the transformation area of the palette so this component knows that it's receiving a message from T24 in one particular format and it's got to dispatch it to a mail server in a different format and this is the component that has responsibility for performing that mapping at runtime so you may recognize on the left hand side here fields that belong to the T24 Forex application and on the right hand side we have a schema that describes an SMTP mail so familiar fields such as the to address the from address the subject um, and also the body of the message for text-based format and HTML based formats so the information I want to pass includes the name of the account officer the currency that's been sold in this forex spot and the amount that's been sold and I want all that information fed into the body so I've used drag and drop tooling to achieve that let's look at an example so when it comes to populating the text body I've used this funclip view um, there's a concatenation component here so I've said take the account officer name from T24 take the amount sold take the currency sold and separate them with these pipe symbols which just happens to be the format that IFT the cloud service we're going to be making use of um, expects and so this component will build a string and put that string in the body of the text message so we should see a string that says account officer three pipes amount sold three pipes currency sold okay and then hard coded in these other fields are strings such as the subject line of the email forex business event so having defined my mapping my flow is complete I've added some display components here so as a developer I can watch the messages passing through the integration flow during the runtime and I'm just going to validate my process and then deploy it into the runtime so these labels will now turn green and this integration flow is now listening for Forex events taking place in T24 and as and when they occur it will collect them and it will deliver them down these routes perform the transformation and perform the routing to our target so to understand the mechanism we're going to employ we need to understand just a little bit more about this IFT cloud service that we're going to make use of so IFT, if this then that um, provides over 100 channels which we can use as building blocks to put simple conditions together um, amongst these channels I'm going to use three today we're going to make use of the Gmail channel and the Google Drive channel and also because I want to talk to my hardware device we're going to use the Wemo switch channel and we use IFT to build simple recipes and I've built two of those recipes so I've said if a new email labeled Forex arrives then turn on my Wemo switch and again there's no code here I've just put the label as it's defined in Gmail and I've told it which of my switches in case I had multiples that I wanted to be activated in my second recipe I've got the same trigger but the action is slightly different I'm saying if a Forex labeled mail arrives then the action is to add a row to a spreadsheet the name of the spreadsheet is Forex spot deals and then here we see those pipes so we're using those as a delimiter so that's why we formatted the message to include that delimiter in the middleware and final thing we had to do was say just simply the folder where that spreadsheet lives in the cloud so before we perform the demonstration let's just show that there's currently no messages in my Gmail inbox that on my Google Drive 
cloud account I've got one spreadsheet which I've entitled Forex Spot Deals and if I look at the contents of that spreadsheet I've got a header row but I've got no data values at all. So now we move to T24 browser and I'm in a version called Forex comma Spot Trade and I've set up a trade where I'm buying USD, selling euros at a spot rate of 1.38 and the sell amount is 70,000, the buy amount 96,600. So I'm now going to commit that transaction and because we've got an event attached to it, this will generate an event in what we term the interface table, the table from which the custom adapters collect messages. So now we return to the ESB design time and let's have a look at those display windows and see how that message was treated as it passed through the integration flow. So in addition to routing the message to the transform component, I also sent it to this display window. And so this display window shows all the information that was received from T24. And you'll see here the currency bought and the amount bought, um, the currency sold and the amount sold. And you recognize those data values from the version that we saw in browser. Then we transformed the message into a mail format. And in addition to routing that onto the mail server, I sent it to this display window. And so here we can see the subject line we were expecting, Forex business event. And here we can see the data values have been inserted in the body of the email, separated by those pipe characters. And finally, after we got a response from the mail server, we captured that in a third display window. And we can see here that that mail was successfully dispatched. And so now returning to my Gmail account in my browser window, we can see the successful arrival of that email, exactly as we'd expect from those debug windows in the integration flow. And if I look at my spreadsheet, we can see that that T24 transaction data has been propagated through and appended as a row into my cloud-based Google Drive.